Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today we're going to do a little bit of garden talk. Um, getting my potatoes ready. I got a bunch of these that are chitting and ready to plant. Going to be going into the ground here very quickly. And so uh, I've cut them up and they've dried for a few days. But they're ready to go into the garden. You're supposed to cut these up and then uh, let them rest for a few days. Uh, so that the the wounds heal you know harden over before you plant them there's a slight chance that they could rot in the ground i've done it before where i just cut them up and put them in the ground usually it's fine but you know just for better results they say you should do that and it pretty much is true anyway i've got a lot of these things that are already starting to sprout they're ready to go into the garden and uh we'll have this year's potato harvest so what i want to talk about today is just eating seasonally you know, I did that video the other day on the farmer's markets. And I think, you know, we have become so accustomed to getting everything we want when we want it here in America today as Americans. And without realizing that if we're really going to be sustainable, if we're really going to have to rely more on our own local agriculture, we're going to have to eat seasonally. There's just certain things you can't get. And that's one of the reasons why the farmer's markets are seasonal. They're you know, only certain times of the year. And certain times of the year, you're going to be able to get certain things. I have long tried, long tried, to make certain items that I grow in my garden last all year. And grow enough so that I have it all year long. And what I do is I just become more and more frustrated. And there are ways you can do that. If you do certain things, you can grow certain things and then you can make those certain things last all year round so that you never have to go without them but unless you really zero in I, like i was watching a video the other day and it was really helpful about how you can grow you know different types of onions there's long day short day i think and inter intermediate and then you can have onions year round if you do certain things with those certain types of onions and I'm like, you know what? I just have too much in my life going on to be an onion expert in order to have onions all year round. And maybe some of you in my audience, you have that kind of time where you can study this and search these onions out and being able to sprout them from seed and grow your own seed and learn how to do the short type onions, the long type onions, and then the intermediate type onions so that you can grow onions year round wherever you are and whatever zone you're in. I don't have that kind of time. It's the same way with potatoes. I would, I have tried numerous times to grow certain types of potatoes and try to plant them in certain ways, certain times, so that I can have potatoes year round. And I just can't figure out a way to do it successfully and so what we came to a determination on years ago was you just have to learn to eat seasonally there's going to be certain times when you have certain things and then certain types of the things you grow are just going to come to a point where they just are not really edible anymore they're not very they just just not in their prime here's a prime example right here so this is last year's potato right there and it's long past its prime. There's no, no matter how much of these things you tear off, there's just came a point in time where this potato is just not going to be fun to eat anymore. Could I probably subsist on it? Yeah. If I was starving, I could probably do that. But at some point, you just got to be like, you know what, buddy, you're going to be for next year's garden. <laughs> and I'll just keep you around for that purpose. And I've got a few of these things around, you know, that I'll be planting this year. And they'll produce more potatoes. It did, did a real good job. But at some point, there just comes a time where, you know, I'm just not going to be able to deal with potatoes today. I'm not going to be able to eat potatoes today. Now, that's why fresh potatoes, fresh potatoes. But I, gain, I can my potatoes. This is a dry canning method. I put dry, cut up my potatoes, put them in the jar, and I put a little bit of butter in there. And I just can them just like that. You know, and this is against, you know, most canning guides will tell you not to do this. But I've learned from other people who've been doing this for years that this is a great way to preserve your, your potatoes so that you can have potatoes whenever you want them. But if you think 
And, and if you think you're going to be able to easily just grow your food and be able to have this food year round until it comes around to the next the point next year where you have to grow more, I have some disappointing news for you. Now, again, there are people out there who can do that. They want to spend the time, effort, and you know, zeroing in on all these different methods and all these different things. So, but the reality is that's just not the historical way of eating. People ate seasonally. Ate seasonally. Let's go out to the garden, put these in the, the tubs that I have, show you how I'm going to do that, and we'll talk some more. So these are mineral tubs, and I've got a bunch of them, and I have some more I still need to fill. And what we do is we just take the sheep manure that we get on the homestead and we just fill it up with the dirt. We add some amendments to it, you know, some different uh, chicken fertilizers, you know, here and there that have dried out or some other things, you know, coffee grounds and stuff like that. But it's mostly just stuff we've harvested from our sheep. And then we top them off with a little bit of this. And then we, as the plants grow, we continue to add more uh, fertilizer or more straw, hay, whatever and uh, just let that grow until they're ready to go. And then we just dump them over and pull out all the potatoes. And these mineral tubs are pretty easy to find if you live in cattle country or if you know people who keep cows, a lot of times they will give their cows or steers or whatever cattle they're raising. These minerals uh, that come in these tubs, a lot of times the recycling centers and these trash people won't take them because they're hard to deal with. And so, a lot of the farmers are just stuck with them and they pile up and they pile up and they pile up and until some fortunate person comes and says, hey, I would like to take those off your hands. And the farmer's like, absolutely. And so you take these home and you fill them up with all kinds of manure that your sheep are giving you for free and then you grow potatoes in them. So great source of finding these. Anyway, all these potatoes, I got them in the bag here um, and some of my other ones I haven't brought over yet. They're gonna go in here, they're gonna go layered, and then I'll add more soil. I'll probably add some more potatoes later on as they grow. And eventually this thing will be all the way up to the top, full of soil. And then once they're done, again, topple them over and harvest your potatoes. Hi guys, how's it going? So I'm on the internet the other day and I've come across this amazing looking recipe for cured leg of ram. You know, like a prosciutto type leg of ram, leg of lamb. And it looked absolutely amazing. I'm like, oh, I still wanna try that recipe. And I'm thinking, I mean, I have a ram I could butcher right now. Uh, it's just, it's getting too late in the season. Butchering season is basically over. I mean, I'm outside in a t-shirt right now. People have all tr always traditionally butchered their animals in the winter time when you can make the world your refrigerator and things can properly cure. You don't have to worry about things going bad. And uh, it was just like a simple, easy recipe. And these people did it really traditional and made it look really simple. I'm like, man, I wanna try that, but I'm gonna have to wait till next year. But it gave me the idea for doing this video and, and just like the potatoes and onions and so many other things that you grow, there are just things that you're gonna have to learn how to do seasonally. There are things you're gonna be like, you know what, I would really like to have this particular item all year round, but I may not be able to do that. And that's okay. We can a lot of our, our stuff that we pull out of the garden, we can meats, we can broth, and I put all that up in the pantry. And we live in this world of luxury where if something runs out, if I really want it that bad, I can go to the store and get it. But more and more, so much of the store stuff is heavily processed. You don't know what's going in it. There's all this talk about putting mRNA stuff in lettuce and all kinds of crazy things. And I'm like, man, can we even go to the store, buy stuff and feel even halfway decent about what we're buying, halfway confident about what we're giving to our kids. And that answer is increasingly becoming a louder and louder no. So here, here's, here's the thing that I think I need you to accept. As I have accepted this in the past, but I, I, I've come to the realization I need to re-accept it because I think I've gotten out of the habit of some things. But the reality is people traditionally ate seasonally and that's okay. There are gonna be times where you don't get everything you want when you want it, how you want it. You know, 
the time of fresh meat is over and people from now on traditionally throughout the centuries have subsisted and consumed cured meats, smoked meats, preserved meats. And then it was a time of happiness in the fall when it came back and you could, the temperatures dropped and you could have fresh meat again. But in the springtime and summer was a time where you planted your garden and you had all your things in, that would come up and these new fresh things that you didn't get to get all through winter that you now get to get because the temperatures have come up. So it's like this constant back and forth that you get to enjoy. And I think we've gotten away from that. We've gotten away from the understanding of that. Anyway, I just, uh, I was watching a video the other day and I saw this thing about the onions and I'm like, man, I really need to try this. And, and I'm like, I got so many things on my plate. I just don't have time to become an onion expert. Even though I want to, I just don't have that kind of time. And I'm probably pretty sure that you're kind of in the same boat. There's a lot going on in the world. Things are moving at a fast pace and you probably don't have the time to familiarize yourself with all the different types of onions or potatoes or tomatoes or all the different things you could be growing so that you can have every single thing you want all throughout the year anytime you want it. If I'm wrong, if I'm just being lazy, if I'm just somehow not putting forth the effort I should be, please leave a comment below and let me know that I need to straighten up and get on board and become an onion expert or a potato expert so that I can grow every single variety all year round. <laughs> Put up greenhouses and all. Let me know how much of a failure I have become, if that's the case. I'd love to hear about it down below. Leave a comment right down there. Right down there. Hit the like button before you go too, guys. Um, you know, and maybe at least if I am, you know, kind of, on target here leave a comment because probably other people need to hear the encouragement that hey listen you don't need to do it all it's okay if you eat seasonally it's okay if you don't get everything you want when you want it we'll get the things when we can get them and enjoy them when that time comes we've lost i think that in our culture today but again, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find our best-selling shirt, Stupid Should Hurt. If we had more hurt in this world, we'd have an awful, awful lot less stupid. And there's a lot of stupid to go around if you haven't noticed lately. All right, guys. See you next time on the Homestead. Bye. Have you ever gone to a health food store and seen all those small bottles of probiotics in your cooler section? Man, can they be pricey. Are you really getting all you need to improve your gut health from those expensive bottles? How viable are they? Most of those products claim to give you between 8 and 15 strains of gut-healthy healing bacteria. Think of each strain of bacteria as a different factory in your gut. Each factory is responsible for breaking down that food in its own way. The more factories you have, the more the food is broken down and the easier the food is absorbed and digested by the body. A 2018 study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that one fermented head of cabbage can produce up to 114 strains a beneficial bacteria. That's a lot more food factories than you're getting from that expensive pill bottle. And that's just cabbage. Imagine the probiotics when you add garlic, onions, pepper, and more to that ferment. PerfectPickler.com and its home fermentation kits provide you with everything you need to get started making your own gut healthy food factories from the comfort of your own kitchen. PerfectPickler.com even provides a jam packed recipe book with many of our kits. Visit PerfectPickler.com and start fermenting your own veggies to begin your journey to better gut health. That's PerfectPickler.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.